in this field here after I come by about the 1st of October. I've seen where they've been dragged out there. They haven't been eaten at all. What I've accomplished by putting the beaver tails here early is it gets those animals off that road here, gets them using my trail, and whether they eat it or not, I don't care. But it, once that coyote knows this trail's here, I then when the season opens, I get the first chance at them. Generally, when I make these trails, I do not use a straight trail. Because if you make a straight trail, it looks too human. Not for the coyote, but for people driving by. And I don't like it clipped right down close to the ground. I like to make it a little bit rough and an S or a jog in it. So if you get a coyote, I caught one down there last fall, and you can't see right down the trail if you're driving by. This, this making your own trails gives a trapper a whole new dimension in coyote and fox trapping. You just think of all of the field divides uh, where the blow soil has drifted up over an old fence, real high lush grass. I use those kind of locations a lot. All, all you'll have is a strip of grass running half a mile long. You'll see the coyote tracks on the edge of one field. Make your, make your trails across the hump. Put in your ram. You'll see that coyote or fox just can't resist a nice trail, nice highway joining one piece of land to the other. And the normal the normal lay of the land here, we've got a series of ridges. Behind us is work worked land. The coyotes normally run down this road behind us. It's just it's not much of a road, it's just a trail. They they walk down there, they cross over about a half a mile down here. What I'm doing with this trail is offering that coyote a new avenue, a new highway to get where he wants to go. Okay, what we got here is a trail coming off off the river and you see just to to hide this catch from pe people traveling this river I, I'm snaring down here in the, the bottom of these small benches if I was to snare up on top of them which are some lot better places but if you ha happen to if anybody happened to see your catch you could either t take it and so on you'll see I've got I've got this coyote here, and I got another ram just sitting right there. And it's unusual that I, I that I, I haven't caught two here because usually in a place like this you you'll usually catch two. There's nothing spectacular about this. Just one 16th inch cable here, seven by seven is what we're using. It's about all. Okay, I want to show you a system that I've devised for using lure in cold climate like we have uh, in conjunction with snares. Uh, in this climate here, in the 
the winter time, you, the, uh, if the lure freezes up, if it's, if it's frozen solid, it'll emit very little smell. So what I've done is I've taken this plastic container and I've punched a bunch of holes around, all around the sides. You could use a cottage cheese container. And in the inside, I, I've got a, a, a square of table napkin. And I just folded it and folded it. It's clean. There's, there's, it should have no other smell on it at all. And I fold it until it goes in. And then I put it in the bottom. And I put lure on that. I put one ounce of lure on that. And the lure has got to be mixed with, with lots of alcohol and lots of glycerine. Remember, if this freezes up solid, there's not much odor going to come off it. When I get to, to, to the lo location where I want the coyotes to come around and, and, and check this odor, odor out over and over, I fasten it in a horizontal position in the, in the bush, and, and I, I, I usually wire it in a willow clump or in a tree. And uh, sometimes I use four of, four of these on a real good location. And I've seen where the coyotes have come in and I've caught one and the other and will just keep circling around trying to locate this odor. And, and it's them, so that's why I use four and five, even six rams in one location. And you're going to pick up two, three and four coyotes at a time. So this is one really, really good system of keeping your lure operating in cold, cold weather. Okay, what we got here is a dry creek bed coming off the, off the main river. The main river's froze, coyotes traveling up and down on the ice. What I've got is, is some lure placed in, in, those, in those willows off to the right of, of the catch. And it, it just pulls the coyotes in here. There's no other reason for them to be in here. It's kind of scrubby that doesn't go anywhere. Uh, so they come in here. This nets me one or two coyotes a year. Real good location. Just neck down, perfect for the ram. Okay, what we've got here is one of those super locations. Uh, we're right just below the edge of the, of the rim of the valley here. There's a snow bank that follows the rim. Gets hard packed, providing a real good highway for the canines. Uh, we have a fence there that got, cuts down into the valley here. That isn't a bad thing either. It doesn't add too much here. Uh, what we've done is provided a pail of beaver inside and about four ounces of lure down in, in here. And uh, the magpies, they've, they've been working that bait up and sometimes a very small bait. I don't know if you can see it. It's just in a, in a, in a plastic pail there. And the, the coyotes have even been chewing on the edge of my pail. But when the coyote's walking up top here, this kind of location instills confidence in that animal. He can see everything from up there. He's not afraid to come down in here. And uh, if there's any animal tracks or any animal moving down here, he's going to see it. He feels very, very safe coming down in, into here. The smell, it permeates from, from this lo location and it floats up to the top of the, of the ridge there if the wind is right or if, if the air currents are right. And he's just got to come down here and, and, and check this out. In the, the daytime, he may hear the magpies down here chattering away. So you've got You've got a path where you know he's traveling, and then you you have eye appeal. You've got the mag, magpie sign or the sign of the bait. That's eye appeal. That coyote can see that off off the banks. And and sec, second of all, you you have sound here. Lots of times the mag, magpies will be here working it all day long, and the coyote the coyotes will they'll they'll hear it. And then you've got. One more add, added thing here, you, you've got the smell of lure. No, well, there's, there's one kite on the path there. Got, get him. And then to his right is a fox. A lot of scrub in here for real good taping. And then you've got the 30 pound pail of, of beam. Beaver insides. You see where the magpies and the kites have been trying to get it out of the pail there, and they've got they've got some dragged away there. And then you've got this kite right in front of us here. Now 
the other two cone bear now the other two power snares are that we can't see in this photo here is off to our right they just they wouldn't be able to see them in the scrub but they're they're for coyotes that come out of the valley more more than for, for, for ones that are coming off the top here you notice this this one here with the it has the gray painted ram the spring part is all painted gray you notice how hard that is to see okay I guess we'll just go in here and set these back up and maybe take some shots of, of how they were set originally we won't catch here again until it snows a few inches. I've got the camera crew down in here and we've been done. This is a super location that I've used for years and years. I'm going to try and explain why it works. The reason that it is so good. Now you've got a river here. You've got a frozen river. This affords the, the coyote of just like a highway in, in the winter time. So he's traveling up and down this river. To your right here we have a range of hills that, that run away back into a forest reserve. In the center of the picture here, you have a stream, you have a creek coming out that it freezes up and it allows the coyotes a good hard packed avenue of travel. Over to the left, you shine f or further to the left here, you'll see there's another range of hills. So you've got, you've got three important intersections here. You've got the range of hills break, funneling the coyotes into here. You've got good travel, hard packed snow and ice. Now one of the main reasons that this particular set works so good is that this creek is the indent in the high banks here. If you look, if you go back and look on both sides of this creek, there's high banks with scrub and doesn't afford a very good uh, path to come down onto the ice. That creek, when it's froze over, it's just the number one highway coming onto this river. To the right of the creek, you'll see a path. There's a trail going through the scrub there. I've, I've got a coyote caught there. See, it's the only, only natural location. It's the only natural spot for the coyotes to go through. On either side of of this creek is is very high banks. A sheer bank. So when the creek is running over, front, when there's water on top of the ice, no coyote's going to want to walk on that. So to, to come down on there's five rams over there set, three on this trail that we were are just talking about, and there's two over by those large big trees. There's a big oak tree at the back there uh, to the left of the stream. We're going to shoot some shots of what it looks like in there on location.
Okay, this is the southern approach to that frozen stream. We had one ram there by that little Saskatoon bush and the coyote's laying on the ground. It was caught maybe a couple nights ago. And you can see he's in, just laying there on the ground. You can see the coyote tracks coming up there. Now I'm setting trap, tra uh, power snares a little bit remote from this stream because I don't want to spook them off using it. So I'm picking them up as they're coming through here. Okay, now we, we could just swing around and we could be able to pick up another one. Just to the right of that big ash tree there, there's a, there's a stick I had over the, over the trail by the big ash tree there. And the coyote's laying on the ground just to the right. And you've got this frozen creek just to the right of that a little bit. You see the coyotes are, fu this is, this picks up the coyotes as they're coming through from the southern slope here. And on the picture you should be able to see where there should be an another power snare or maybe two more. Would have worked real good in here. Okay, now we're on the north side of, the, of that small frozen stream and we're on this trail here and I thought I only had one, now I've got two. This is a small one here that we picked up and if you could swing around just take a shot of the frozen creek down there, you'll see why this trail is used. And you see I've got a coyote down there and if you can look behind you'll see that there's one ram still set. This is the advantage. You see, we picked two up here on this side. We still have one more ram. We had five rams set on this location. We've got four coyotes here. We used lure earlier on when I set this up. I put four ounces of lure in the creek bottom here. And, and the smell comes out of the creek. You can. What we have here is a location where the beavers come out of the water. As you can see, we have these freshly peeled white sticks here. Anytime you find piles of those spots where the beaver have been up on the bank chewing the bark off, you know they, they are going to come back. Periods of high water like we have right now, in lots of cases the beavers are flooded out of their homes and they need to find nice dry locations like this. Okay, we'll go back to the, the ram here and I'll try to show how I've got it set up here. What you're trying to do here, I've got the old snare, same as I did with the kites. I've got it hooked to the bottom of the ram and in beaver trapping, I try to use iron stakes. I've got one hammered in right there and you've got to fence this area down here, you've got to keep the snare off the ground. You see that beaver when he comes up here, if he gets a paw in there, or two paws through there, or he may knock this down. What your, what your ultimate aim is, is for this snare, for his head to come through here, and him to pick the snare up around his neck. Uh, a neck snared beaver is a lot more dollars in your pocket if you can consistently snare them by the neck. No fur damage at all. You're relying on the ram to kill them. I've got a 116 7x7 aircraft cable here and I've got a cam lock on, the, on there. Okay, now what, what I use at a location like this Mind we talked about the scent mound that the beaver left here. What you're doing by, by using a caster based lure here is you're, you're telling that beaver
beaver, that another beaver has been here, and they're a very territorial animal. They'll come in here and, and really check them out. And that here is, I just moved back up the bank, and I, I smear a, a real large gob of, of lure up there. Okay, when that beaver comes through here, these white sticks, I've used them lots of times when I, I ran out of lure, it helps bring them in. If you just even just use these alone, you want to have them where he can see them off the water. What we've got here is a trail that the beavers have been coming out of the river, going up, up the bank to cut some trees. All I've done here is, is shoved a dry stick in the ground. Okay, there's no problem here. This little wire here that I've got, that's all that's holding the ram up there. And when he gets caught, get that and gets a snare around his neck. It doesn't matter whether he goes that way or this way, he's gonna unhook that right away and set off the ram and you've got you've got your dead animal. One more thing that uh, for some of you that haven't been trapping beaver very long, how do you decide which uh, uh, path or slide are you going to use? You always look at the slide that is wet. Here we have a good, good trail they they've been using last night. They have a ball of, of grass and mud here with, with, with actually caster on it. All I've done with the ram is I've shoved it into the clay bank here. It's holding itself up and I use one strand of 14 gauge wire just wrap it around to hold up your snare. Remember again, you want, a, you want your beaver, you want the snare off, off the ground so he's got his leg one on each side so he doesn't interfere. The, the ram will kill the beaver if he gets one leg or or both legs through but it's a lot better if you can snare them only by the neck okay we'll just put a large gob of, of lure again in here and we'll pack up and move down Good morning. Good morning. We're down here checking our rams this morning and, and we got one here. Nice big beaver. There you have a real good neck catch. Um, see if you can get a close up shot there. Uh, this was that power snare that was shoved into the mud here, that's all that was holding it up. The loop was hanging on a little bit of an angle here. Snare it isn't really kinked up that bad, eh? If you caught him in an ordinary snare without being hooked up to the ram, you'd, you'd really see what a kinked up cable is. They all just, 